My name is Nico Kesa, chef at Giorgio, and uh, I am here with... Lucy Ventura. Lucy Ventura, to show you at We Chef Live, to show you a simple, um, let's say, dish that you can work ahead. Here I have an anonymous beef tenderloin wrapped with bacon. Very simple. They can be a pork tenderloin, they can be veal tenderloin. The only thing it changes, you got to study the timing or the temperature in the way you're cooking it. Okay. I've been doing this as the, at the restaurant for the last couple of years, so I know exactly what I'm doing time-wise. And I have my oven running at 450, a uh, low fan. So what I did is lay out all the bacon on, on, the, on, the, on the cutting board, right. uh, put the beef tenderloin on it, season with salt and pepper, and just fold, it, fold it up. Just roll, simple just roll. like I just say. Put in, a, in any, any uh, roasting pan. Uh, can I put only pepper on it? Anything that is, uh, they have enough fat, like uh, the, the bacon, right. it can absorb very well uh, uh, black pepper. It's not going to be that strong like in any other kind of lean preparation. So, How long? And then we have everything uh, ready to be put in the oven. How our apple smoked bacon beef tenderloin wrapped. The oven is set for 450 and for 35 minutes, a low fan. And uh, when we put this in the oven, we can prepare the other dish, which is a halibut. I can tell you uh, about the dish in a second. Let me put this in the oven. Good. 35 Ready minutes set. for 50, ready to go. And uh, we can start our uh, second recipe, which is uh, halibut with uh, spring vegetables. So these are basically the first couches and, and uh, couches, couches. What? No couches. What is no that? I got some uh, accent. Don't make fun of me. All right, I'm sorry. Basically, you're allowed to catch some particular fishes. In this case, halibuts just uh, in determinate period of the year. And uh, this, uh, I got this just last night, and, and, and I cut it myself. And uh, next to it, next to it, we have fantastic spring vegetables, which mm -hmm. are uh, baby harichok, fava beans, uh, wax beans, and uh, I steam them okay. already to accelerate the process and uh, basically marinated with olive oil, uh, mint, and parsley. I can uh, cut uh, in a half, be, be probably three, um, like a hinge sides of the halibut. I can uh, put in the pan, and uh, actually I can uh, do that right away. If you, please, you hide my, my olive oil. I know that we are losing too much, but can you please find yes. it? Here it is, thank you so much. In You're the meantime, welcome. I can uh, cut this one in a medallions. This is a one pan dish. What I mean by that is they can put everything in the same pan. Oh, I love that. And not a lot hey, of pans to clean. And not a lot of pans to clean. And uh, you move around better and uh, also uh, save a lot of time. The only key thing that you have to calculate it when you do one pan thing is the timing. You can't put a, this big piece of olive with the veggies that can be ready in, in five minutes. And this can take 20. Okay. So you got to basically uh, try to... Uh, Again, calculated by trying uh, your protein uh, that you're cooking uh, to be at the same time or your veggies or your sauce or whatever you're doing. Wait, where the do you get your fish? Uh, from the fish store. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget that. Absolutely. You have to pay attention. You have to go to your fish place, ask where the fish come from, uh, when arrive, and uh, fresh fish doesn't mean necessary that it's fresh. Fresh fish is mean just it's not be frozen. But fresh, fresh fish is mean catch yesterday, two, three days ago at the most. I got this going. I, let's see, let's take a break, commercial break. What do you think? Sure. I put this we'll on a right pan. Back. When we're coming back, we assemble all these beautiful dishes for you. Back to Chef Live, and just in case you missed anything from before, we just like you to know to go to cheflive.com and you can catch up on all the recipes. Lucy, right. we have to turn on our halibut. It's nice and changing color, so let me. Them? Yes, flip okay. it. How you getting the tongs? Well, you know what? Let me try this. Easy. Easy. All right, easy. It's not that easy. Go ahead, show me. Well, let, let me show you what I do. <laughs> Tongs. All right, all right. No tongs? Well, you can do with the tongs, but you have to know that you have to... Uh, now we're at the delicate moment where they are becoming a little bit more gelatin. So if you don't want to do a 
There, there you go, Lucy. There you go. There you go. I did flip I five already. Got it, got it, yeah. uh, you got two. Close enough. Close enough. Oh, oh there you go. There. We lost one. You're getting, you're getting slow. We lost one. There you go. You, you pour everything on the side. There you go. Beautiful. Beautiful. And you leave the center kind of available to warm it up or reheat Vegetable. our veggies, which have been steam marinated, like I said before. This is delicious. And these are delicious, nice and tasty. It smells so good. Where'd you uh, learn this recipe from? This I tell you the truth, this was uh, half of my mother recipe. She used to be do the, <laughs> the veggies, but with lamb, kind of casserole, casserole thing. So my recipe, sometimes they are not necessarily uh, represented in the way that I learn it. I pick inspiration from uh, different occasions and uh -huh. whatever is in season here. And then uh, basically I built my own uh, redone, uh, rebuilt, uh, reflip, uh, twist recipe. And um, be careful now when you do it, uh, uh, Lucy. You don't want to move around too much where the Hollywood is, otherwise you can uh, fill up. Fish. Yes, okay. grab up a fish. If you want to do, you can uh, put this uh, in a little corners out there. Yeah, because I want these to cook over here. Too. Yeah, yeah. We talk about just reheat. Remember, I steamed this before. And this is really three minutes away. Uh, probably four or five, I would say. Yes, four or five minutes. And in the oven, we have about... Uh, the big tenderloin wrapped with uh, apple, smoke, bacon, pepper, and it's cooking good. and uh, slowly. We, we have a medium rare to medium tenderloin, but whatever it is can impress you is the tenderness and the flavor they stay whole inside. And of course, it got a little bit more of the... Uh, make fun of me, am I? <laughs> Who is this? An Italian dead. So we have the flavor from the smoky, <laughs> From the, the, the smoky uh, uh, bacon and the juice is all inside. Uh, like I said, Lucy, we got salt and pepper here, all the flavor. Right. Uh, if you want to add the white wine, you can. Uh, otherwise, just uh, a we little put. More salt and pepper, you think? No, no, this is good? perfect. This is ready okay. to go. Okay. We can, uh, uh, like I said, add a little bit more white wine and uh, just to keep it moist. If it's not released too much, but I guess the veggies are. So I heard you cook for some really impressive people. How? I, I did. I've been lucky. I've been lucky. I've been working in, uh, in Italy uh, before. Well, I moved here in 1998. So in Italy, I've been working for a great uh, catering company. Uh, the, we cater to the Vatican City, so big events. Uh, uh, Pope uh, John Paul II, uh, the really? Pope at the time. Absolutely. And of course, all the big events did he, did was... Did you, the Pope? Did he bless you? No, he didn't. He said, you're okay like that. He said, just go away. Just go, go and uh. <laughs> So I believe I, I have, I have uh, been fortunate. And of course, all these big events, the other big, big, other famous people was invited. And uh, uh, doing catering, uh, we went in all the private houses, uh, uh, famous uh, and unfamous uh, people. And I learned to... Um, the every recipe is done different because the big guy say they are one without garlic or with or garlic. With, right. So there, in their experience, I learned to be flexible. I can't be stubborn and say, I learned my recipe this way. That is the way it to be done. Right. And that's it. It's no, that you, you want to please everybody. Way. Yes, everybody got his own needs and allergies and, and, and intolerance. So you got to do, you got to be flexible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like your uh, favorite thing to do this is in the world. My favorite thing to do in the world, go yes. to the beach and uh, have a piña colada. No, it's cooking, of course. Cooking. Yeah. Cooking is my favorite no, thing to do. It's delicious. It and delicious. I like to have to see your faces, other people's faces. They never have a chance some product change mine. But if you have this fish, don't tell me they taste like chicken, please. Okay. Can you do that? Yeah. It looks good and it's ready to plate. It's ready. Absolutely. You, you can tell by the color, by the texture, and most of all, by the smell. smell. Yes. yes. Uh, like we said at the beginning, we can be we can do this like a family style. So you can no no particular fashion. You can hold dish together in the same plate. These are all good, good vegetables. There are good veggies. What easy to do. What you decide to put that combination together? Uh, because I go and shop. I try to go and shop by seasonality. So if you remember well. Uh, fava beans and artichokes was uh, was the spring to me. Besides feeling in love, there was the other thing that tell me the spring. So Fun this is love. why 
uh, fall in love every spring. Every spring. And uh, that is why I pick it, and they are easy to do. They are they are they are tasty, and it's no better thing to pick your 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 vegetable in this right season for a cheaper and better uh, taste. And uh, we are almost, we're almost done with this one. We oh, can I plate it. Try this. We can plate it all at once. We can uh, use our magic, magic. No, no strength oh. for that. What's this? Yes. Holy oliva. There it is. And this is the drizzle. Drizzle. This is a real drizzle, guys. It got all the seasoning, it got all the flavor, and uh, this is ready to go to the table. Buon appetito. Coming back, I can uh, get my uh, pans for the cipollini and the asparagus. The who and the what? Cipollini. Cipollini is the cipolla piccolina. Uh, no, English. Oh, okay. It's a small onions, which is a little bit kind of kind of pushed down, not really round, but sweet, sweet. Okay. And they use there for preserves to do a la modenese with uh, balsamic and uh, brown sugar. I can start a little reduction of my, there you go, a reduction of my cream, uh, chopping some uh, shallot first. So we all can't cut like that, so just... You can buy chop it up stuff already. Okay. If you don't want to take the chance to short your, your beautiful fingers. And here, some shallots. Let me show you another way to do it, safer. I try. All right. Keep your finger down like this. Touch the blade to you, so don't lift enough to take any of your, any of your finger or nails. All right. So put this, put it here. Put this away, of course, olive oil. Mm -hmm. You can uh, try to caramelize a little bit the ingredient here. Our mushrooms are as or, as or this saute. Now what kind of mushrooms are those? These are shiitake, but they know it to be shiitake. They can be portobello, they can be even better porcini, they can be a uh, combination of all of them, whatever is in season again. Don't get crazy to follow my recipes or any recipes until, it, unless you are working on pastries. Otherwise, use whatever you, you find and, and try it, then maybe you discover that you're better than, than us sometimes. Where should the shiitake mushroom from? From uh, the produce store. <laughs> Uh, like China. They are. They got China, but we use domestic here. They are uh, um, no wild mushrooms. Okay. No. I'm the only wildest here. All right. Guess what I'm putting here? Olive oil. Yes. Now, hard pain all the time, especially when you do, like in this case, cipollini. You want to give them a little uh, uh, crispy color, like what happened with the Hollywood. So I give a little bit more uh, appeal, appealiness. So where do you get cipollini? For the produce store, the same of the shiitake. Okay. Yes. Just I've never seen them before. They are all cultivated. They are from here, California, most of the time. Everything is being steamed to accelerate it, the cooking time, the finish time, and uh, everything got salt and pepper. I can add a little bit more to the cipollini. When you steam product like the cipollini in this case, add a little bit more salt to the water. Otherwise, they never get the taste of salt because they are too, they take too long to cook it in the saute otherwise. Okay. Now, I got my shallots here getting caramelized and almost cooked. So, uh, who is Go ahead. like your mentor? Who is, who my you mentor? Who I have so many to be thankful. Uh, let me tell you the recent ones. The recent ones are Luciano Pellegrini for the last seven, know him. six years. You know him? Yes. yes. Well, he was a mentor, but thank God I have to work with him next to him just a, just a year or so. It's a little bit too intense. Yeah. So I got my own store, which is uh, his, uh, his restaurant in uh, at Mandalay Place. But uh, before him and with him, I work in many places, like in Tuscany, in Rome for seven years. And uh, each of my chefs or my bosses really shared everything with me, which is a great, great thing. And this is why I like to do these things. What about Chef Bob? Chef Bob is a little jealous though because you know French guys don't tend to share all their mm -hmm. recipes. You don't like Italian wines. This is why they know 
Only French people can do French recipes. Yeah. Because they are jealous, they don't show you everything. Yeah. We share everything. I know. He's okay. on vacation right now, so we can talk Again? about it. Again? Yeah. My God. This that guy takes off whenever he feels How he can like afford it. to do that? I, I don't know. But, you know, God bless him. And here we got some uh, chipolini that become colorful. I can reduce just a little of, of cream here to give the consistency and texture to my mushroom sauce. The chipolini are getting some color. And in uh, probably a couple of minutes, I can have the asparagus. They can take only other two or few minutes. Uh, I can add my mushrooms here to the cream. Oh, that looks really good. So, asparagus. Just throw, Just right throw there, it huh? right there. You put on the side the other ingredient, the chipotle Those in this case. Those are pretty steak. big asparagus. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. You know what? Big asparagus. Big onions, big asparagus. Big everything. Uh, let me add a little bit more cream here. It's becoming a little bit too thick. And Thanks please, Tigre, yes, yeah. yes, yes, do something. I mean, what uh, do you think I'm here for? Just look pretty? Thank you, yeah. yes. Okay, Somebody wherever. told you that, right? Yeah. I hear that before. So, without moving them too much, just make sure they got equal heat. No coloring up too much. You get the fat asparagus just like the produce store. The same produce store. Yes, yes, yes. And you can do this ahead again two or three days. If you're throwing a party for a friend, you want to be able to entertain and to be stuck with your preparation. Get everything ahead, put in the pan 10 minutes, 15 minutes, have uh, a friend like uh, you in this case help you out, and then uh, you chat, and uh, you drink, usually I don't see my <laughs> drink, but that's okay, and, um, that's right. and uh, you assemble everything in, in, in a friend dish. Yes, absolutely. I can uh, check my, this is going on for about three or four minutes. My beef uh, tenderloin should be ready in about, in about, uh, couple of minutes so but let me check just in case sometimes oven ovens are tricky and maybe maybe we got I'll everything ready to better. go just a little bit please lower down the gas and let me get the big guy from the oven another big guy and be careful mm. I am beginning you with a hot pan this is good good stuff smells great hot and smoky all right oh my god beautiful now this is ready to me ready to me okay but because uh, meat temperature this is a tricky tongue i hate this tongue i don't like it i don't want it i we can use, i can use the other one i don't have the other one. Oh my god too bad look i can check this one you can have a home a thermometer thing whatever you can check your temperature i never use it so i'm not going to start now you can put this here you can cut the first slice with the skews that you are checking. So why is this ready to you? Why is it it's not to ready me, to me? It's rare. I like the meat rare. Okay. So this is where I'm assuming why why this is ready. Well, it could be ready but to let's me too. let's I check like it, it out. Rare. Let's check it out before I do anything with the meat. I can make sure that this got the right temperature, which they are. I want to keep, not necessary. The color again is good, but not necessary. You want to slow down a little bit? I can't understand you. <laughs> Speedy, wanna, Speedy Gonzalez. I, I, I want to have some color, crispiness to the veggie, but I don't want to necessarily everything have to be brown. You know, I like white, I like black, brown, all colors. Good. The sauce is ready. You can turn that off. I can uh, plate this in the square dish that is uh, next to your left, just in case the meat is ready. So we can right away put the meat on the veggies. Beautiful. Again, another dish, family style. There is my spoon. There's a spoon. Thank you so much. My there spoon? too. Okay. You want both? Yes, oh, of course. Both. both spoons. Okay. okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Again, this it will be at the center of the plate, uh, whatever style you like. In this case, you can do this. In this case, so actually, we should be uh, let the meat rest for about a few minutes, mm -hmm. so all the juices stay inside. Uh, it's not still tense. Bob like Bob told me that. He did? He learned from me. Yeah, he said you learned from him too? Oh yeah, well we have changed things. It's a good sporty rivalry that is going on between us. Now again, you put everything together. I like to put the meat here too. Beautiful. Looks good. Mm, this is ready. To me. This looks so easy to make. It is easy. I know. Right? Very good. It's like surprise everybody. Very good. I like surprise. Let's uh, turn it on the pan over there. Right. And the oven is 
singing on time, but I beat the hoven. Ha, ha, ha. This is for the sauce. Let me see here where we got. Hmm. This is a good knife? No. Maybe let me try this knife. Ho, oh, oh. ho. Oh, ho. Oh. This is the medium one. Let me get at two spoons again. This is a little bit too hard to hold it. So you can do this. So with the tongs that you threw away before, yeah. you can do this with the tongs. You gotta stop throwing that stuff away. There you go. What do you think? Oh, look at that. Beautiful. This is my medium rare. There you go. You can slice it up. You can put in the broil if you want to. You can finish rare. it. Absolutely. Let's see. Two of us only here. We can present this in the way just to show uh, how we plate in it. We can do accommodate it like this, like this, like this. No sauce, a little bit salt because a big, big piece of meat, you gotta take more time to get the season of it. And guess what? what? Olive oil to everything else on top. And this can be prepared, really, even the roast the day before. You can chop it up, you can slice it up, and just read with the broiler. If you throw this in the oven a second time, the meat can become dry and tough. Okay. It's beautiful. Thank you so much. Good job. I'm proud of you. Thank you. I'm yeah, proud that you are proud of me. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there will be heat for today. And uh, please check it, check the recipe and step-by-step -step recipe with us at cheflife.com. See you next time. See you next time. One scotch, one bourbon, one beer. One scotch, one bourbon, one beer. Please, Mr. Bartender, listen here. I ain't here for trouble, so have no fear. One scotch, one bourbon. Tell me some, since my baby's been gone, everything is lost, I'm on this kick.